today. This is such a thrill. The last time we were together was during the quarantine, and now we're together here, and we're all sort of, shall we say, out of the quarantine. Um, we're, we're uh, you know, getting our lives back on track, uh, gathering together. Uh, so I'm so excited to be in person with you guys soon. I'm going to be here in New York. Here I am in New York. Welcome to my studio. Um, on November uh, 15th. So I'm hoping if you're in town, we can all meet up live then. Okay, here you come. Your paternal grandfather's cousin, Enrico Caruso, Enrico Caruso. Oh my goodness, ciao Enrico. This is so cool. Thank you for notifying everybody, Emma. I hope they're coming on over. I apologize for the delay. Here we are. Um, I will get it together for next week. I thought I had it all my T's crossed and my I's dotted, but clearly wasn't the case. So uh, Caruso, this is so cool. Enrico is such a talented uh, guy. So I'm just really happy to see you. This is really fun. So it's 12 noon here in New York City, which means it's 9 a.m. in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And in Italia, what, it's 6 p.m., Buona Serata. Ah, oh, Christina Bone is here. Woohoo! I've got some returnees. This is so cool. I was saying the last time we were together was quarantine. Lillian, oh my goodness. The you guys have such beautiful voices. I know you guys well. Emma, Christina, Lillian. Oh, really stunning. And Julia, you're here. Clara, Manuela from Greece. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Let me know where you're signing in from. Thank you. Big thank you to Emma for getting the gang over on this channel. I'm so pleased. Ciao, Eloise. Good. Thank you, honey. Also, Eloise, for giving them the link. Cynthia! Yes! From uh, Canada. She's here along with Emma from Canada. And uh, Rick or Rick, you only sing in the shower. You are in the perfect place today. I'm really thrilled. People are signing in. Yippee. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy. I, uh, next week we'll, I'll put it together much better, but you know, we make it work, right? This is one of those things like, like when you make a mistake, you just take the opportunity and because of your beautiful hearts and you guys like make things happen, you made it happen for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So today is a day that we are going to really focus in on the foundation of singing the, the three elements that are the huge foundation. Now, many of you online, we've all worked together. Um, some of you have done my workshops together. Some of you, this is the first time you're here. Like Rick, you're here for, and you sing in the shower only. Fantastic. Um, others, maybe it's the first time seeing me and uh, I love it. So for those of us who have studied with me before, just remember, where it's always good to practice. And, and sometimes when we review these elements, something comes across us that, that even uh, brings it to a deeper level, you know? So this is great. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll all go to a deeper level. Every time I teach it, I learn, so I re, it's a reminder, it's, and we always have to practice. So this is great. Okay, we've got I Iran in the in the chat. Hello, Shazrad. Shazrad is here. I'm so honored. I think it's like 8.30 p.m. your time. Is that right? So good evening. Uh, and for those of us on the on East Coast time, uh, happy noon-ish. We're a little late because of my, uh, <laughs> my gaffe, but we're good. Okay, so uh, what I was thinking to do is let's... Um, Teach you how to sing? Yep, we're going to teach you how to sing. We're going to focus in on the first three elements today, which are really the foundation of every style, whether it's high opera, pop, rock and roll, uh, rap, or just speaking. It's really the foundation of our voice. Uh, so I call it like vocal power and vocal health. And so you can be in charge of your beautiful voice and your beautiful um, uh, communication skills. They're yours to own. So JV is saying, looking forward to the book. I'm so honored, honey, thank you. 
Uh, if you saw my video, you know very well that I haven't been online because I've been finishing my book and it's going so great, but I missed you guys so much. I just really wanted to come back and we're going to do an hour together every Monday. When I'm not here, if I'm traveling, I'm going to do some pre-recorded uh, uh, videos so you can work with me every Monday here at 12 noon. Okay. So really keep that in mind. Meg, hello, you're here. Wonderful. Oh, you just were on a stage. You've been getting your legs on a stage, Meg. This is great. So speaking of Meg, I've got some really great questions here. So I wanted, as people are signing on, I wanted to go through just quickly some of the questions that people have asked that really connect to what we're talking about today. So Meg had the question, which is not just, just Meg, it's all of us. Um, I get so nervous. What do I do when I get so nervous? And then she was sharing that when she gets so nervous, the voice goes away. So uh, all of you who are signing on right now, what I'm really clear about is that you are all sensitive, extra sensitive. This is our gift to be extra sensitive because we are artists. We have to sing through that sensitivity and we release our audience so that they can live in their true emotions. So it's our job to drop into that sensitivity. So it makes, makes total sense that you would get extra nervous because you're extra sensitive. So what do we do with that? Well, it's a craft. And today we're gonna do the elements that will really help you with the foundation of our craft. So hang with me, Meg, and everybody, because I get nervous too. If you're not nervous, it's a little strange, but we want to use those nerves, not let them sabotage us. So there we are. Also, you're, uh, Caruso, you're a moon in Pisces guy. Yeah, I'm in moon in Pisces as well. So welcome, here we are. We're sensitive, right? Excellent, sensitivity is it. Okay, so another question is, is it possible to learn to sing by yourself? Well, you know, I'm gonna have my book, so you're gonna be able to study and learn and read, and then you can try it on yourself. But this really is a craft that we love to share. And I suggested to go be in a choir or go audition for a musical or, or just enjoy, because we have to do the private emotional stuff that we do in our privacy, we have to make it public. So, whoa, that is a craft. It's not easy to have your privacy that's, um, that's completely in the open so others can experience it as well. And again, there are tools to do this. So we're going to do that. Yeah, very sensitive, Meg. You are, you are on the spectrum. I think I'm kind of with you there. Very high sensitivity. So just understand, this is your gift. It's not the thing that is not your gift. Okay. So here we go. Uh, hold on one sec. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next question. Somebody said, I have an airy voice. It's very airy. Is that okay? No, it's not okay. Airy is um, something that I'm trying to remove this. Hold on. Um, so having an airy voice uh can be a really cool color. It's something, you know, on, uh, on your, your toolbox for different colors. But uh, we want a vibrant, what I call home-based voice. So that's what we're gonna focus on today, your beautiful, vibrant, powerful home-based voice. Uh, now, Riley from um, Instagram, she's my student. She's the musical theater videos page. She's incredible. She's always having such beautiful comment and she's always taking your guys' questions about singing. And she shared with me some of the questions and some of the questions were about trauma. So some of us have had bad voice teachers who have said to us, you're, you're not doing it right or giving us bad information. Unfortunately, that's out there. We also maybe have teachers who said, don't sing, or family members like Shahrazad, who shared with me, family members who say, you're not to follow your artistic dream, you're to do something else. So these are things that we that happen. There's some mental things that go on. Um, and so these tools that I'm giving you today will help you drop into your truth. No matter who is telling you what, you need to drop into your truth and follow your purpose and your path in the best way you can. So I wanna help you with that today. Okay, um, now, just to say quickly, cause I wanna get to the work. 
Shazrad also shared with um, the fact that she had a teacher because she was in a choir or in a musical. And this is what uh, Riley shared with me too. When you're in a choir or in a musical, there are usually a lot of sopranos. Soprano is the most common uh, vocal category for, for, for women. And so what the choir director will do is try to find the most talented uh, ladies in the group and make them altos. First of all, they have a good ear so they can do harmony and uh, they can sing in a lower range. Well, what Shazrad was sharing with me is her voice started to hurt because she was just pushing it down, pushing it down. So I'm gonna um, really focus on that today too and make sure that we clear that up. Uh, another question is about vocal fry. We're gonna go through that and um, because vocal fry, it's interesting. I have another student who just came back from college and her friends from home said, your voice has changed. What happened? She started taking on that cool vocal fry, which is like, hey, how you doing? I'm sorry, you guys, this is in your generation right now. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? So we've got to get out of vocal fry. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. I'd love you to get a pen and a paper so you can write down just a couple of notes we're gonna do this hour together, and I just want you to write these down to get it clear. We're gonna do some exercises, and we're even gonna sing a song. So you ready? Let me know you're ready. <laughs> you can keep typing your questions. I love it. Sibila, here you are. Thank you for saying hi, honey. You're gonna be able to focus in um, later, no problem. Okay, Barbara. Buongiorno, buonasera, voglio dire. You made it. Awesome. Yay. Christy's here. Okay, Lilian, ready? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, so these are the three elements. Now, those of you who studied with me before, you know these, but write them down anyway. The first element is the breath. And when I say the breath, I mean inhale. Okay, the second element is support. Number two, when I say support, that is connected to the exhale. And this is about great vocal health and about your vocal power. And it's also about connecting to your vulnerability. So Meg, this will come in handy. And then the third element is about your voice, which I call resonance. The resonance is your voice. Okay, so you have them all written down. Number one, the breath. Number two, support. Number three, resonance. I don't have all my papers today because we're just doing this, you know, really simply. Okay. So here we go. You know how people say just breathe. And when I hear, when I see people, you know, respond to just breathe, this is what they do. Now that is not how we breathe when we sleep at night, right? Cynthia. So Cynthia, I want you to write to me here, honey, where would, would you breathe at the top of the lungs or the bottom of the lungs when we sleep at night? Where would that be, Cynthia? Or anybody else can chime in. Okay, so where are the lungs? Show me. Here are the lungs, right here. And Emma just responded perfectly. Christina responded perfectly. And Cynthia, yep, when you're sleeping at night, it's not even usually, it just is. We breathe at the bottom of the lungs. Excellent, Lillian, wonderful. So this is what I call the panic breath. So back to Meg's question, and Meg, I'm only using you because you asked the question, but all of us have this issue, even me from time to time. When we're panicked, we breathe high. So if you're nervous and your nerves get to you, you're gonna do this and then you're gonna be off your voice already. So we want to train the body to do what we do when we sleep at night, which is to breathe at the bottom of the lungs. Hey, Moonbeam, Jack, so good to see you. So here are the lungs, and we are planning on breathing at the bottom of the lungs. Now, where is that famous diaphragm? You guys have worked with me before. I want you to be writing because it's great for you to type it out. This is great rehearsal, great practice. Hello, Felicia. Woo, so happy to see you. Are you, uh, let's see, where are you? What city are you in? Okay, 
So yes, the diaphragm is not too low. It's not down here. The diaphragm is right underneath the lungs. It's a muscle. What kind of muscle is it? Yeah, it's an involuntary muscle. So that means it's just like the heart. The involuntary muscle here is right underneath the lungs. Now this is, everybody talks about this freaking diaphragm. They all say, breathe from your diaphragm, the diaphragm, breathe into the diaphragm, breathe, the diaphragm is the breathing, just breathe from the diaphragm. But nobody knows what that means. We don't know what that means. So let's get it clear. We have two balloons in our chest and they need to blow up. They can't do it by themselves. So what do they do? There is something really incredible in our neck. What is it called? There's something, there's this nerve in our neck and Emma has got it. It's called the phrenic nerve. This nerve is something we're unaware of. It is automatic. The nerve sends a signal. Mary needs to breathe. How does she breathe? The nerve sends a signal to the diaphragm. That's right, Emma. Excellent. Sends a signal to the diaphragm. What does the diaphragm do? It contracts. And when it contracts, I always think that it used to think it went out like that. It actually does this. It contracts like this and it pushes down. Now, when it pushes down, it pushes aside the organs in our tummy. So the tummy goes out. And this is the most important part, you guys. It creates a vacuum. So the the lungs can fill up with air. Because of that vacuum it creates, the lungs fill up with air. So let's repeat it. Repeat it with me. Say it out loud. The phrenic nerve. Good job. The phrenic nerve sends a signal to the diaphragm. Say it with me. The phrenic nerve sends a signal to the diaphragm. The diaphragm contracts. The diaphragm drops down. It creates a vacuum, creates a vacuum, creates a vacuum, and air rushes in. Whoa. So we, as the artist, we have to know how the body works because those days, Meg, that we wake up and we're nervous and we don't know what to do, we have to remember, okay, body, I'm with you. This is how the body works. But when we have stress, when we have nerves, when we're taught to hold our tummy in for ballet, our body wants to do something else. So we're going to train it to keep in the, the correct breath. So what do we do now? We think of the air, instead of starting up here, that's what I call the panic breath, instead of there, we're gonna start the air at the bottom of the lungs. So all we have to do is think air here and that it's dropping down. Now, the tummy has to be released so that the diaphragm can push down. What do we do with that? We just surrender. Let's do that together. So the air starts here and just surrender your tummy and that's enough. You don't have to tank up. Just take a little breath easy. Yeah. Now, if you're a ballerina or somebody that's been taught to hold your tummy tight or you walk around with your tummy tight because you don't want to look fat or you were told, you know, hold everything in, you might have to push a little to get those, to coax those muscles to release, but just let it go. Excellent. That is the breath. You've done it. How are you doing? What are you aware of? What are you aware of? I am aware that the breath is releasing. I am aware that I'm only in the panic breath. You know, it might not be perfect. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to, we just have to let. Ah, Emma says she's aware she's relaxed. That's cool. Now you might, you know, have a different reaction. This breath will tell you where you are right now today. It might make you feel nervous. It might make you feel nauseous. It might make you feel giddy. I don't know. Or it might just make you feel calm. So everything is correct. Sharp breaths in. Ah, okay. Yeah, they can, other, other, um, Taekwondo, other, uh, different, different kinds of methods, you know, certainly focus in on the breath but let's just stay with how the body actually works. Okay, are you with me? Yeah? Now we're going to, I think probably the most important element, it could be the most important element on my list. My method has five elements of voice technique and five elements of the emotion, 
the emotional life. We are doing the first three elements of technique. Now, Moonbeam, you say that you yell from the diaphragm. This is not, I want to tweak that thought, okay? I have a feeling they're doing the same thing that we're talking about. But to yell from the diaphragm is very confusing. And this is why. Remember, the diaphragm is involuntary. The diaphragm just contracted, it dropped down. And now we're going to speak or yell or sing. But as we do that, um, as we exhale and do that, the diaphragm is rising and relaxing back up to its spot here. If we now jam the diaphragm, your voice is gonna hurt. So what do we do instead? I'm here in New York City. I'm on the 16th floor. Where is the support of my building? Right, it's at the bottom, it's in the foundation, right? Yes, good Jack, thanks for listening. I'm glad you got this. This is a huge tweak and it's so important. I'm so glad you told me this because this is a huge confusion that goes on with support. So we've got the air, we've got the diaphragm. We don't want to jam the diaphragm and like the building here, the foundation's at the bottom. So we're gonna go under the lungs, under the diaphragm, Where's that? I call it belly button. So now I would prefer you to say we yell from our belly button, from our super belly button. So here's the belly button. It's somewhere here, maybe an inch below, right about here. We're going to do an S exercise together. Now, Christina and Cynthia and Emma, are you guys bored? Is it feeling boring or is it it's kind of fun to review this information, right? To really break it down. I don't want you to be bored because I'm not bored either. It's like it's like we're we're just practicing and it's really important. Okay. So, yay Christina, yay Emma. Okay, good to hear. I just want to make sure you're with me here cuz this is really fun. All right, we've got the inhale. Now the exhale we're going to do an S and the belly button is going to scoop in. Yay Felicia, I'm so thrilled, honey. This is awesome. So watch me. We're going to do the inhale. We think the breath at the bottom of the lungs, the diaphragm is working, it's contracting, it's dropping down. We're just thinking inhale, because the diaphragm is involuntary. It's doing it for us. We don't have to focus on the diaphragm. We know where the diaphragm is, and then we forget it. We let it do its thing. It, we inhale. Now we're gonna work under the diaphragm from what I'm calling the belly button. Here comes the S, breathe in, release in, and then we're gonna swing it in. Oh my God, Lynn! Hi, Lynn! 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 I'm so happy to see you. Here we go, Lynn. We're gonna we're gonna scoop the belly button in. Inhale. Send it in. Inhale. Now, why do I say scoop? It's more of this kind of action. Do you see my sternum popping out? That's fantastic. That means there's no tension here. Try that with me. Inhale, just a little inhale, release that tummy. And now exhale with a scoop. How's that going, Moonbeam Jack? Notice I'm not saying to do it to do the S from your diaphragm. What would happen if I did that? What if I yelled or did the S from my diaphragm? You see all the, all the veins in my neck popping? That is not good. We're going to go under. Now, the reason why it's this scooping. Oh, good. You're doing it. Excellent. The reason why we're scooping is, again, the breath. Inhale. We take a breath. The diaphragm's working. It contracts. It drops down. Now, as I said, the diaphragm is rising. It's decontracting, if that's a word. And we're following the diaphragm under it for that extra pressure to help the vocal cords not hit each other. That's the whole point. We don't want the, the vocal cords to hit each other. So what's happening again? We inhale, the diaphragm contracts, it drops down. Now we're working and we're following. So have this idea of like a swing. Excellent. Good. How's that going? What are you aware of? Can we do that together? Now, guys, what I'd love you to do is every morning, 
And Meg, this is really going to help you out with those nerves. Every morning, this is going to be a part of your waking up and getting ready for the day. You know, you brush your hair, you, you, you wash your face, you put on your makeup, you brush your teeth. Now in the mirror, you're also going to do the scooping. This is great, Jack, that your belly's going in, but that's from here, not up here, not around the diaphragm, only here. Now make sure that sternum is popping out. Look in the mirror. When you're in front of the mirror, ready to comb your hair, watch and see if you can do the S with the sternum popping out. Now we're not gonna do it because of the video. Something just happened. I just lost you. Where are you? There you are. Um, we're not going to uh, lie on the ground right now because of the video, but you can lie on the floor right now if you want. When you wake up in the morning, gravity is a really great help. You can just lie on the floor and do this as Okay. Awesome. Yes, add it to your routine, Meg. This is really going to help you. What we're doing is we're focusing in on our power. And when the nerves come up, the breath goes away and everything goes high and that sabotages us. So now you are the master of your beautiful instrument, the master of your body. Yay, Anna's here, Anna's here, awesome. Um, and the young kids, you guys are getting the young kids in on this, I love it. So we don't wanna go to the high breath and then if we don't have the breath and the support, we can't do anything. Then even our high notes, our speaking voice, everything gets sabotaged. So these two elements are huge to start setting us up. And then we're gonna move on to connecting it to our voice. And so Shasrat has shared with us, she tries to do the S every day, but it feels deeper experience doing it with me. Oh, my body is reacting like I haven't really taken much breath recently. Uh, I'm getting full body chills, Shazrad, because you have had to deal with, and a lot of us can understand this, with people saying no to you as an artist. You're an avid reader. You love the arts. You love singing. You, I can imagine you love acting. You love dance. You love reading. You love literature. You are very, very special in the arts, but you've had a lot of no's. And so what happens is we, we then don't want to take too much space up. So we breathe shallow. So for you, I would suggest to take maybe a little more air in. Now for somebody else, you might be over tanking. This isn't just for everybody. You have to kind of go with where you're at. For most of us, it's just a little breath is enough. For you, you might have to get a little more air in because you got to take your power. We got to have our individual power. So Meg is, is asking, what about shakiness in the voice? When you're nervous, the voice doesn't shake. My face quivers. Okay, you know what? We're going to get to that, but right now, let it quiver. Just quiver away. Let it shake and quiver. Who cares? None of us know. It feels you as the artist five times bigger, but you just let it quiver. Keep moving it out. You're sensitive. And what the quiver means is you're not quite releasing everything. And I dare say, Meg, and many of us here, probably everybody here, I would guess, I would venture to say that you, again, are extra sensitive. And we are told, oh, stop crying. Don't be so drama queen. Oh, you're so, you're, you're so, too, you're too much. Many people say you're too much. So what do we do? We diminish. So that's what the quiver is about. You've been on some level, I'm not sure which one, but some level you've been diminishing. So when it starts to release, it quivers. So you know what? Let it quiver. If you start crying, keep crying. This is an art form. We have to keep going through it. And it takes time. It doesn't going to happen, you know, in one second. I always share the story and it's in my book. I talk about my stories too in my book. I have so many stories about students. It's so inspiring. Whether they're Carrie Washington or James Gandolfini or Mary J. Blige or um, my students from Australia or my students uh, from New York or LA. And also I share, share my stories. And one of my stories is that I was with my mentor, Susan Batson, my acting teacher. 
And my emotions were very um, cut off. I just, I had, they, they weren't available because I was always, you know, trying to be the good girl and make sure everybody was happy and just and not really be emotional. So when the emotions started coming out, I couldn't stop crying. I was in class three times a week and I was in the corner sobbing and I said, Susan, I don't know why I'm crying. I'm just crying. And she said, just say, keep crying, Mary, just keep on crying. So I say that to you that I have been there and it's a craft and you just keep on quivering and you keep on crying. It's all good. Yes, Cynthia, Susan, Susan, Carl are still online there. She's my mentor of over 30 years. Very big part of my book because all of the emotional life side of my book is from her training. And uh, many of you, Cynthia and Emma, have gone um, to her online courses. So check it out, Susan Batson Studio. It's really easy to find on Instagram. And you can just start signing up and just go on a Wednesday. Go when you have a free Wednesday if it's your first time. Susan should be there on Wednesdays. And you don't have to prepare anything. You just show up. Okay? Yay. Okay. So we've got the inhale and the S. Let's do it together one more time. Excellent. And, and uh, Cynthia sharing, Carl, Susan's son, is always there. He's so good at privates online. And, uh, and that's fantastic. You can, even, you can even hire them to do privates. Okay. We've got the breath, which is the inhale. We've got the exhale with the support, which is connected to your power. You got it? Any question on that? Is there anybody here online right now who is not certain? You might not be able to get every breath correct, but we want to get a higher percentage each time. Is anybody have a particular question? Or are you guys feeling pretty good? So Meg says, can you focus the tension somewhere else? Well, right, we'll do, yeah, uh, we're going to get to that next. Okay, honey. So don't worry. We're going to do that when we sing the song. I promise you. Okay. So just hold your horses. We will do it. Patricia, como esta? Que bello, c'est quoi? Okay. Yes. And Susan also has a book called Truth. It's uh, heaven sent. So please pick up truth as well. Okay. We're now going to connect our inhale the breath with the exhale support and the support support connects to our voice so that we don't hurt our throat. And this is going to be very connected to the questions regarding speaking too low or speaking in our throat or doing vocal fry. This is life changing to have your beautiful resonant voice forever for always to be healthy always. And if you're sick or have something going on, you'll know how to speak or what to do to make sure that you don't hurt yourself. This is really cool. Okay, so let's think about this. Let's think about your, your voice. It's true. We have two vocal cords in our throat. They are muscles. They do vibrate. And they are a big part of your talent. Whatever your DNA is, you know, whatever your gifts are that the universe hands out, that is your talent. Now, there's a quantum theory that says if we focus on a molecule, the molecule changes. So the main thing is I do not want you to focus on your throat. Brava, Emma. You're such a good student, honey. You are exceptional. Um, the vocal cords, if we focus on the vocal cords, even me talking to you right now, they start freaking out. I start clutching here. I get tension here. So to your point, Meg, we're going to put our attention somewhere else. Yes. So I have a picture for this. I'm not showing you my pictures from my book yet. because not, not until it's released. Then you're going to get to see the pictures. But I'll show you this. That's right, Jack, never sing from the throat. And that's right, Meg, we're gonna put our attention somewhere else. What I call it, please write this down, the front passage. This is, and write down the word home base. For those of you who know baseball, it's like the home base, but it's also just the home of your voice. That's what we're thinking. La casa della tua voce, that's what, we, what I say in Italian. 
Okay, so here's your face. In front of your ear here and here above your lip, this is what I'm calling this area is called, and above, is called the front passage. So this is where we want to put our attention. You have beautiful cartilage and bones here, and they surround air pockets. Brava Lynn, that's right, front passage. The cartilage and the bones surround air pockets, and those air pockets vibrate. So pretend this bottle of Deer, Deer Park, it's, it's a good water, um, so here's the plastic, that's your bones and cartilage, and inside are air pockets, just like this bottle. I blow into the bottle. Oh, it vibrates inside, and it sends out your personal, beautiful timbre. Each and every one of you has a one-of-a-kind one voice. Nobody else has your voice. It depends on your bone structure. It depends on the DNA of your vocal cords. But where we put our attention is in the sensation of vibration in the front passage. Mm. Isn't that cool? Mm. So what are we going to do? Ronita, you made it. Woo! Hi, honey. Okay. We've got Israel in the house. I love it. We're all international. Okay, so let's do the S together. Now, instead of, Jack, this is important for you. We're going to have the belly button move in, and you're going to feel sensation of vibration around your mouth, and you're going to chew. So it'll be something like this. Now, try to do that with me and put your attention here on your cheeks. Make sure, this is really important for Shazrad, make sure you're not pushing down here. Don't, we're not going to try to get any vibration here right now. This is the dominant resonator. Now, there'll be vib other vibrations in your body, it's true. But the dominant resonator is here. And I would suggest to Shazrad to raise it a little bit higher. Mmm. Okay, so we do the S. S as if we're going to inhale, do another S, but instead do mmm. Try that with me. S. S. Again, and breathe. And now vibration. Mmm. And chew. Beautiful. How are the kiddos doing, Anna? Are they getting it? I love it. Mmm. So... Uh, Caruso, you're saying, can anyone learn how to sing? Well, if you can do this, you're going to be able to sing. So I say yes. If you have vocal cords, you can learn how to sing. But you have to put these elements together right now. Are you doing it? The inhale and then the S. Great, Shazrod. Yeah. So we don't want to go like this, honey. We don't want to go hmm, down here. Instead, we're lifting the vibration, not necessarily the tone, Though for you, because they had you pushing your voice down, you can even go a little higher. Hmm, something like that. Hmm, excellent. Now, we're going to say uh, little syllables. The belly button moves in. You're going to go, me. Try that. Me. Now, punch out. Go, me. Or not punch, let's push. Me. And belly button moves in as you say me. Me. You feel vibration? That's why I'm using M. M is awesome because you can really feel the vibration. We don't want it to go down into your vocal cords. Uh, that's that vocal fry. What happens in vocal fry is that you're literally rubbing your cords together. And if you keep rubbing them together like that, they create nodules. They create calluses called nodules. And then you have trouble with your voice forever and you can't sing because you've got these nodules. Then you go get surgery and you get the nodules sliced off but you still speak like that in your throat, they will come back. So we are now learning how not to get it on your vocal cords. And it's also your home base, vibrant, powerful voice. It's so good. Okay. So Emma says so beautifully, this is a fundamental part of her warm up. This I want you to do when you're at that mirror doing the S. S the next step, do the M. Mm. Try it again. Mmm. 
Wonderful, Jack. I love it. You are so good. Thank you for your com your confirmation. That's really impor important. Yay, Christy. You're also doing this, honey. Excellent. Even if you're not on a stage right now. And Emma, I think you had a concert last night. Were you on a stage last night? I saw your beautiful flowers. Uh, amazing. Mmm. Yep. Now for fun, let's try the lip trill. Just push up here and go. We're going to do this next week when we're doing high notes, but try it. Lillian says, my throat always used to hurt whenever I would talk loudly or sing. It hasn't since attending your quarantine lessons. This is great. This is mean, Lillian. This means that you are connecting your breath, support with your resonance. And again, your resonance is your voice. Now, I learned this from the great master's opera singer, Phyllis Curtin, in Tanglewood at a master class I did in my early 20s. And this is in my book. She said to, you know how we think of our, our throat as our voice? We are changing. This is, again, like, like Meg, what we're talking about. We're changing our attention and we're saying, no, this isn't my voice. My voice is the speaker's. My voice are my cheeks. This is where the words live. This is also important, Shazrad, when you're pushing your throat down or if you somebody who suffers from vocal fry or your friends all talk like this. If your friends talk like this, it's so contagious. I write a story in my book about me hearing people talking in the throat and then I started doing it. And like I said, my other student who just got back from college, she contagious, she took it on. All her, her friends in college were talking like that. She got home and was talking like that. Her voice was fatigued, exhausted, and she's like a rock star and she can't be exhausted. We have to speak like this every day in clarity, cleanliness, clearness. And the other thing is like my wonderful nephew, Harry, he's thinking about going into broadcasting. Um, he's a statistics genius in baseball. And it's important also, if you want to go into broadcasting, you want to have your voice living from here. That's where all those gorgeous timbres come from, not from your throat. Now, that said, you might be doing a character where you choose to have this weird vocal fry color. Uh, uh, that might happen. And you know what? I'm all for that if it's a choice. And as long as you have your support really connected. But this, again, is home base. You might want an airy voice when you're singing for your pop song. You might want to whisper like Billie Eilish does on her songs. That's all cool. But this is our home base, vibrant, clear voice and your power. And I want you to have your total, amazing, one-of-a-kind power. And uh, Cynthia just brought November up November 15. Just to say really quickly, if you're in New York City, please come. We're going to do this together in a theater that's a really intimate theater. It's my home away from home. It's an off-Broadway theater. And um, there'll be like 100 of us just hanging out and we'll be singing songs and doing a whole darn uh, revolutionary send, my method. So this is great. Okay. So now we're going to put this together on pitch. Okay. And we're going to sing right through this. You've already done your speaking. Let's do this one more, one more thing before we move forward. Take your hands like this. Now, don't forget, you're always going to bounce that belly button support. Without the support, none of this means anything. You've got to make sure you have your breath and support. And then as the belly button bounces in, you're speaking me. Try that. Ma. Good. Put your hands on your cheeks. Bring them out. Belly button moves in. Ma. Now, staccato, which means separate. We can re-attack the belly button without an extra breath. Me, me, ma. Try that. Me, me, ma. Now take little breaths in between. Me, me, ma. Try that again. Me, little breath. Me, again. Ma. Now one breath and re-attack the belly button. Me, me, ma. Good. Now we're going to put pitch on that. Then you're down here. Ladies, we're here. Me, me, ma. Try that together. Me, me, ma. Me, me, ma. Good. Now let's move to this pitch. Men, you're here. Ladies, we're here. Kings, we're down here. Queens, we're here. 
me, Mima. So here's your hands, belly button, me, ma, ma. Good. Now put your hands in front of you, and we're going to be aware of that vibration in the front passage. Belly button bounces in, me, ma, ma. Again, me, ma, ma. Excellent. How you doing? Are you good? Good. Oh, says so Rod, well, maybe I'll live stream it so you can join us from your hometown. Okay. Now we're going to play a little catch. So move on back. We're just going to go up the scale slowly but surely. And men, you're in a different octave than me. I'm the, um, if you're hormonally a woman, then you're going to be in my octave. If you're hormonally a man, you're going to be an octave below. So like middle C here, men, you're right there. Me, me, ma. Okay, so I think I'll start here instead. All right. Me, me, ma. Me, me, ma. Men, you're there. Me, me, ma. Ladies, we're here. Me, me, ma. Women, we're here. Okay, so we're going to push on each one. Me, ma, ma. And what I want you to do is get into your legs because your legs, belly button down, is part of the support. This is really free. This is easy and loose, and your legs are part of your belly button. Want to try? Okay, here we go. Me, ma, ma. Me, ma, ma. Me, ma, ma. Now keep it here. You have to keep it right here. You can't, um, let me just make sure this person is not welcome. So, me, ma, ma. Keep it right at your cheek, Shazra. Don't let it drop down. Me, ma, ma. Bounce that belly button. Right, Lynn? Me, ma, ma. Good. Throw the ball. Me, ma, ma. Me, ma, ma. Excellent. What are you aware of? Yeah, you got the legs, Emma. That's really great. Anything else? What are you aware of? Cynthia, ah, the ease. Cynthia, I'm so proud of you. And you're sounding like a million bucks, by the way. Okay. Oh, Emma, you've missed it. I'm so thrilled, honey. It's so cool that I've missed it too. I'm just so excited. And, you know, knowing me, I'm going to go over an hour because I love you guys so much. Good. Christina, what are you thinking? Clarity in the voice, vulnerability in the body. Good. Don't clean up. Don't clean up that vulnerability because now we're going to sing through it. Getting the voice in front. Excellent, Lynn. This is really good for your characters too, honey, to have your home base in the front and then you do all those different characters. So you have options to move around the resonance. You might even speak in your throat um, for, uh, what's your cook's name? <laughs> Julia Child. Yeah, Julia Child. Um, you know, then you can move around the resonance. As long as you have your breath and support really connected, you'll be A-OK. -okay. okay, so you're going to be so happy about the song we're going to connect this to. I want you to think of somebody who said no to you. Who said no? I have somebody that recently said no to me. So we're going to sing our song to this person who said no to you. Okay. We'll do, we're going to work on that side of the emotional life. We're not going to do a big exercise on this. I just want you to think of the person who said no. What's their strongest physical feature of this person? What's their strongest human quality? And then we're going to, this is called personalization. And then we're going to put that person in front of you on your, what we call fourth wall. The fourth wall is this imaginary wall between you and the audience. So right now, maybe you're even alone. We're just going to put, find a little point, maybe a poster on your wall, or maybe the plant or the light bulb or the picture. And you're just going to put that person there. And we're going to send this song to that person. 
Okay, so Shazrat, I, need, I feel like it'll take me a while to get used to the change of focus. Yeah, now your chest voice, ladies, we have chest voice. That isn't your home base, Shazrat, especially for speaking. You have to now change the idea that this is where your voice lives because otherwise you're going to be talking like this and your voice is going to hurt and get exhausted. This is your home base. We will do chest voice later on on another Monday, I promise. But right now, this is your home base. So you can go back and listen to this, um, uh, listen to this video and keep practicing with me. But this is your home base. Okay. Yeah, Christina, I'm glad you, you might want to punch that wall. Just don't get, I don't want you to hurt your hand. So don't punch the wall, but we're going to sing this out to this person. Conquered grapes, I don't know, but don't, uh, no, don't drink wine. No wine allowed. Uh, that's another, uh, when we do sensory condition, we'll be doing uh, a, tipsy, a tipsy thing, but no wine. Please do not drink. Okay, so we've got our fourth wall. So now you're gonna write these lyrics down and you're gonna sing with me because you probably know this song. We're gonna do line by line. You write, write down the word fame, ha ha. Fame, yeah, write it down, fame. Now you're gonna write down, I'm gonna live forever. Here's here how it goes, sing it with me. It goes like this. I'm gonna live forever. So you see the person and you're gonna sing, I'm gonna live forever. Right through your cheeks. Right through your cheeks. Put all those words in your cheeks. Okay, good. I'm just reading your, your comments. This is great. This is gonna be so good for you, Meg. We get to like really send it out. What song are we gonna sing? It's called Fame. You'll have to go to bed because you have to work in the morning. Okay, perfect. So it's called Fame. I'm gonna play through it just once so Felicia can hear it. And you guys know this song. I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna learn how to fly high. I feel it coming together. People will see me and cry fame. I'm gonna make it to heaven. Light up the sky like a flame fame. I'm gonna live forever. Sing, baby, remember my name. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So write these lyrics down. I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna live forever. So the next line is, I'm gonna learn how to fly. I'm gonna learn how to fly high. I'm gonna learn how to fly high. Got it? Next line is, I feel it coming together. I feel it coming together. Now sing after me like I sing it and you repeat it. This is a great way to learn a song quickly. I feel it coming together. I feel it coming together. I feel it coming together. People will see me and cry. Write that down. People will see me and cry fame. Sing that again. People will see me and cry fame. I'm going to make it to heaven. Write that down. I'm gonna make it to heaven. Sing it again. I'm gonna make it to heaven. Next line, light up the sky like a flame. Light up the sky like a flame fame. Sing it again. Light up the sky like a flame fame. Got it? I'm gonna live forever. I'm gonna live forever. Sing it again. I'm gonna live forever. Then baby, remember my name. If you want to just stay on an easy note, we'll just do, baby, remember my name, or baby, remember my name. Sing that, baby, remember my name. If you want to go a little higher, baby, remember my name. If you want to go super high, baby, remember my name. We're going to do high notes next week, so if it feels too much for you, just don't do that one. Just do one of the lower ones. But if you got it, like my old students, like Cynthia and Emma and all the rest of you guys, Go for the high, okay? All right, so here's our prep. This is so good, Shazra. This is for you, honey. I was thinking, what song can we sing that's really quick, really fun, really easy, and we are going to tell that person who said no, uh-uh, remember my name. I'm going to live my dream. 
So whatever your dream is, you guys, if you have a dream to be on stage, if you dream to have a book release, if you have a dream <laughs> to have a family or dream to be in a relationship or dream to have a career that's specific to you, you put that dream on that wall and you tell that person who said no, uh-uh, it's my turn. It is my turn. You had your turn. You have your turn. You can do whatever you want. This is my turn. Bye, Jack. I hope you loved it. Catch you on the replay. Awesome. Great. So you go do your work and you'll come back and sing it with us. Hi, Cameron. Super late, but you know this work. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the S together. Now go to the M. Mmm. And chew. Now say, Mi me ma. Good. Now sing, Mi me ma. Good. Now you're going to put the person who said no to you on your fourth wall. You've got your lyrics. And would you please make a video? Cause I want you to send it to me. You can do it privately to me on Instagram. I want to see your work. So please send me your video. I'm on Instagram. Just send it to me in a, in a DM and I will see it and I'll give you some feedback. Okay. Cynthia, I keep thinking of you. Is this like the song that you wanted to sing today? I have this funny feeling. It's so good for you. And Emma, you can do soprano, you can do belt, whatever you want. I chose a song that's really in your speaking voice. And this is great for both men and women. It's a good key for everybody. So um, so this is great. Yeah, am I right, Cynthia? I know. You keep coming in my mind like, oh, she's going to love this today. Um, okay, so shall we do it? Here we go. Okay, here we go. So I'm, uh, we're going to do it twice. So the first thing you do is you see your person, make sure you're connected to your breath. Now speak. I'm going to live forever through the belly button support. I'm going to live forever. And now if you want to, you can just push and, and, and tell them, okay, here it goes. We're going to do it. Oh my God. You ready? You ready? Yay. So the main thing to, for you, Meg, and for you, Shazrat, especially, see that person and tell them off. Say, nope, it's my turn. And if you're shaking, let it shake. And sing loud and get it out there through your cheeks, though. So belly button cheeks, belly button cheeks. Last time. Here we go. You ready? Say fame. Fame. I'm going to. can send me a dm and send me your video i would love to see you and i will i will respond i'll give you some feedback on your video so this is great rick caruso we did it lynn you hit the high note of course you did next week we are working on high notes we've got a lot of questions about high notes now if you have friends that are interested in joining up or you want to tell your friends about it please please tell them to watch this video so that they will get the breath support and the resonance. We'll, of course, review it, but we'll review it really quickly. And it was really fun to do it in one hour together. Yay, Emma. I promise to get this all figured out. 
um, I hope, I hope, I hope I know how to <laughs> get online next time. Oh, I missed you too, Lillian. This is so fun. Good. I'm glad the review was helpful. Emma's got the high notes. You're right, Cameron. She sure does. Thank you, Rick. I'm so thrilled. Thank you, Shazrod. This is great. And uh, yay, yay, yay. Okay, you guys. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess I have to try to put this on the other, you know, i got to figure it out because I, I unfortunately didn't go live in the correct way. I'm so glad you got to do it before bed. These are only an hour. We're only going to do hours. So that'll be great because you guys aren't in quarantine anymore. You've got lots of stuff to do and so do I. So we'll, we'll come here every Monday and I'll see you next time. Oh, Cynthia, I'm so, I'm so glad. And Christina, I love that you're saying love you guys because this is a support system. You guys are here to support each other and to live in your power and take your power and support everybody else in their power because when we all come together like this, we change the world. We change the world. It's so good. Yay. So November 15, I, if you're in New York, we will see each other in person. This will be so fun. Thanks, Lynn. I'm so happy to hear your voice. And uh, Emma, too. Yep. Let's all meet up in, in New York City. Uh, definitely uh, November 15th and maybe other times as well. Okay. Have a wonderful day, you guys. All my love and all my thanks. Thank you for being here with me and see you next Monday, same time. And uh, hopefully it won't be the, the problem with the station. <laughs> okay. See you then. Bye. Bye.